some bolt bites on how to change a rear tube on a Yukon 750 bicycle. So when you're changing your tube on your bicycle, it's a good idea to lay your tools out ahead of time. Um, it's a very simple job, so you don't need a lot of tools. I've got my 18 mil wrench for my 18 mil axles. I've got some wire cutters, which you'll just use very quickly. And I've got some tire levers. There's a lot of different tire levers on the market. These are the ones I have today. Whatever you can get access to, I'm sure will be fine. And then I've got a pump. So first what we'll do is we'll, we, will, we will remove the bolt bike cover and put that aside. And then you'll cut the zap strap off here. Take that out of the picture completely. And that'll be nice and loose like that. And then you can unplug that. Okay, this is, this is the part that gets a, a little tricky. Um, I'll walk you through it slow. Um, yeah. So. First, you just want to remove this right off the axle. It's just a dust cover, and that just slides there like so. Then you want to loosen your axle nuts. Just loosen them for now with your 18 mil wrench. A few turns, and I'm gonna do a few turns on each side. Just enough where you can actually slide the wheel out of the frame. Same thing with this side. You wanna come over to this side, George. Take off your dust cover and just loosen off the 18 mil axle nut. Just a few turns, you can already see the wheels prepared to slide out. So, at this point, we're just loosening off this side. I think the wheels are actually ready to pop out, so come on over to this side. Yep. And for me, the easy way to get the wheel and the cogs out of this position is just open it up there and slide it out. Be a little careful with your hands when you do that. You don't want to run your fingers into this. Okay, so we have the wheel and the tire off of the frame. Now we're gonna take off the axle nuts. When you take them off, pay special attention to how they go back on. So on the side with the router, we're going to take that off first. And the order that we take it off, we're just going to lay it down so there's no confusion. And that way when we go to put it back on the bike, we know what we took off is first off, last off. And same with the second side. I'm gonna back this off a bit. These ones will actually stay in the proper order with the dust cover, so we don't have to be too concerned about this side. So with your tire levers, slide them up on the inside and just slide them along here like so and you can see that'll take one side off got a lot of movement there 
with your gut, with your with your stem. Just pop your stem up and in, like so. And you can usually work your flat tube out quite easily. You can see there's still a little bit of air left in there. That's okay. I guess I could have let more air out. And your tube is out. So we're just going to pop the whole tire off now. When you're taking it off, just pay attention to the direction of the arrows. You basically want to put your tire back the same way you took it off. So if you've got some arrows pointing east or west, follow them, remember the, remember the order. We have our tire off now and we just want to check a couple things on the uh, tire liner itself. Just want to make sure that the stem hole is free um, from any of the tire liner up against it. You can see it sits in there nicely. And then we just want to make sure that it, the tire liner itself is on the rim itself, not pulled either to the left or to the right, but nice and straight. Nice and straight and flat and not twisted. Now that we have the tire off the rim, just want to give it a bit of an ins inspection. Generally speaking, when you have a flat, there's a cause. It might be some glass, it might be a staple, it might be a thorn. Those are common, it could be all kinds of things. The way to tell, there's lots of ways to tell. Um, you can visually look inside. Sometimes whatever caused the flat, you can readily see inside the tire and identify. I'm not seeing anything at this point for this tire. What I usually do is I just slide my hand on the inside of the tire. You have to be a little careful with that. Um, you're just basically feeling for a little bit of glass or a little bit of a staple or a thorn. Usually if you do this for a minute or so, if there was something in your tire that was protruding, your finger will run into it and you'll be able to identify it that way. But uh, be careful when you're doing that. You don't want to cut yourself on something. At this point, I don't really feel anything. And I don't see anything on the tire. You can also visually inspect the outside of the tire. That's another way just to tell if there's something lodged in the tire which could have caused the flat. Lots of times you can see it. Lots of times after they do the damage, they fall out and they're not there but you still have to replace the flat tube. This one looks pretty good. I'm comfortable putting a brand new tube back in that not being worried that there's something that will damage the new tube. Okay so what we're gonna do now is put the tire back on the rim Okay. When you're doing that, you just want to make sure that how you took it off is the direction you're going to put it back on. So I pointed out earlier in the video the arrows. Um, the arrow was going this way when I was working on this side of the rim, the rotor side. So you just want to slide your tire over the rim. Usually they just drop in nice and easily, like so. And then the next step after that, once you've got one side on, is to slide the tube in, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just give the tube a little bit of form, put some air into it, that'll pump it up a little, and it'll just make putting back into the tire and the rim a lot easier. So give it a little bit of air. Slide your stem valve into the stem valve opening on the rim, like so. I don't know if you can get that, but I put the valve of the tube through the hole. And then you just want to tuck your 
tuck your tire, your tube into the tire. Like. And just by having a little bit of air in your tube, it just becomes that much easier to work with. Like so. We're just going to put the last side of the tire on this rim. But what you want to do there is just carefully work your way around the tire, pinching it into the rim itself. Most of the time it'll just fall into place nicely like, like so. And then once it's in, you can give it a little bit of air slowly and that will secure the tire to seat it properly on the rim. I've given the tube um, a fair bit of air pressure, not complete yet, um, but it's a good point just to check the seating of the tire and just to make sure that the bead is evenly fitted along the whole rim uh, on both sides. You just want to make sure that there's even distribution, that it's not bubbled out in one particular area. This one looks to be pretty good. We'll check the final adjustment on that once the bike is on the stand. So before you put the tire back into the dropouts, you want to make sure that the order that you took the washers out are going back in at in the in the you got, you want to make sure the washers are going in the proper spot, proper place, the proper order. So in this case, on both sides, this washer with the axle flats just goes on like so. And same on the other side, you've got one there. And that's the order that I took them out. Okay. okay, so what I do is I just pull the chain down and tuck this up in like so. And now it's ready for us to pop the axle into the dropouts. And you want to be aware of these axle flats here. It's the flat part of the axle they fit into the dropouts. If they're not aligned properly, then they won't tuck in. There you go, just like that. When you're putting your axle into the dropouts, you also want to be aware of making sure that your brake rotor tucks nicely into the brake pads. Uh, just be careful of that. They, it needs to go in nice and balanced. I put the axle nuts and washer back on the order that we took it off same way and just tighten that up you can hand tighten it and then i'll just grab my 18 mil wrench and tighten that and that'll snug it into place I'll tighten this up a few turns okay good that should hold okay so we're just gonna tuck this washer up there and then this axle nut we're gonna Tighten it on to the axle. Be careful not to strip it. Okay, and the rest of the tightening of the axle nut onto the axle we can we will do with the 18 mil wrench just to make sure it is super secure. So I tightened up the axle nuts. I just made sure everything was secure and I made sure that my rotor was balanced in the in the brake and it's running nice and smooth. It's nice and true. So what I'm going to do now is just hook up the last part that we took off and I'll do that right now. I'm just going to hook up the motor power cable connector and 
it might be hard to see by the camera, but there's actually arrows on here. As long as you got the arrows aligned, then you know you're in the right position. Both the arrows are kind of black, the same color as the cover, but uh, that's the right position there. You'll be able to see them on yours. They just plug together like so. We cut off a cable strap earlier that was holding the cables onto the frame securely. I'll put a new one on now, just so they're secure once again, like so. And then we'll just cut off the excess. And then we'll put the volt cover back on and that just secures the cables into the right spots. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, hopefully it was helpful and happy and safe travels.